In this video, I'm going to explain in a simple and easy to follow way how free radical substitution reactions actually work. So in this video, what you're going to learn is how to make a haloalkane, and we're going to study a worked example. So we're going to look at the reaction of methane with chlorine gas to form chloromethane and some hydrochloric acid. And this synthesis of the haloalkane is done using free radical substitution. And this is a great example to study to understand the process of free radical substitution. But before you can actually understand this reaction, you have to understand some keywords. So the first one is to understand the concept of an ion. So here we have a substance that's called a chloride ion and chlorine is in group seven. It's got an extra electron in its outer shell. It's now stable. However, if it were to lose one like this, it becomes something called a chloride radical. And this radical is extremely reactive. And we show the radical by simply pu putting a dot outside of it, and that's representing an electron that is unbonded. This chlorine is likely to be extraordinarily reactive with most things and will try and form another bond in order to get back to that stable structure. The next set of keywords that you need to understand are for understanding the steps in free radical substitution. And the first one is initiation, and that means starting off the reaction. If you initiate something, it means to start something. Then you've got propagation as the next stage, and that's keeping it going. It's propagating the reaction. And then at the end, unsurprisingly, we have termination. So it means stopping the reaction. So it goes through three steps, starts with initiation at the beginning, works through some propagation steps, and then you have some termination that stops the reaction from happening and ends the process. And we will run through all of these steps in understanding how the free radical substitution works. So let's start by looking at initiation. And as I've said previously, initiation is all about getting the reaction started. So here we have Cl2. And as you can imagine, Cl2 is not going to be wildly reactive. So what's gonna to have to happen to make it actually react is that that bond is going to have to be broken. And so I've shown all of the electrons as dots and we've got a line for the bonds. Now we need that bond to be broken and we need to have some energy input in order to break it. So we have some UV radiation, some high energy radiation that is able to break that bond. And when the bond breaks, the electrons are going to move in a very specific way. They're gonna move like this. So one chlorine is gaining one electron, another chlorine is gaining another electron. So in other words, both of the two CLs are getting the same number of electrons. So this is sometimes called homolytic fission. Homo meaning same. Homolytic fission, where the word fission is to do with splitting up. We have homolytic fission of the bond. Each CL species is getting the same number of electrons and the bond is breaking. And this will give rise to two free radicals. So you can see that both of those chlorines is like the radical I showed you before. They're gonna be hugely reactive as they have an unbonded electron that would like to find another electron to form a covalent bond. So we can write this in a simpler form. We can just say Cl2 becomes and then show the two radicals that it is forming. This is going to get the reaction started because we've started with that unreactive Cl2 that is, of course, quite stable. It's got the full outer electron shell with the covalent bonds, whereas now it is two free radical species that are extremely reactive, and they are going to start breaking up some other substances and get the reaction going. And so that brings us to propagation, what's going to get this reaction going. And for this particular reaction, we're going to have multiple different propagation steps, and I'm going to explain each of these in turn. So let's start by reminding ourselves of the fundamentals. So we're looking at this reaction, and I've highlighted two of these in bold. So we're gonna look at how the CH4 reacts and how the HCl is actually formed. We've also seen previously that, that we've got an initiation step where we're getting two chlorine radicals formed. And so let's look at what would happen if one of our CH4s was to react with one of the chlorine radicals. So let's take our CH4 and draw it out in full, showing all the electrons and the bonds. And if we were to react it with a radical, we'll see a kind of movement and rearrangement in the electrons. So you've maybe seen previously about curly arrows that show the movement of a pair of electrons. We can show the movement of single electrons with a kind of half arrow. So let's perhaps look at this electron 
and have it go to the carbon. And then this electron is going to come into sort of this space in here. And then this one's going to go like this. So this electron and this electron are going to form a bond. So the hydrogen and chlorine are going to join together. And then one of these electrons is going to go back to the carbon. So we've got homolytic fission. And this is going to become CH3 when the bond breaks and the hydrogen goes off. And it's going to be a radical because it's got one electron going back. And then you're going to get a covalent bond forming with this electron and this electron forming a pair of electrons. So you'll get the hydrogen bonding to the chlorine. So there's your first product and there's your second product. So we can write this more succinctly as so. So we can just have CH4 for the methane, Cl dot showing that radical. And now we're getting a CH3 radical in HCl. So what you must notice here is that we're starting with a CH4, which is stable, reacting it with a radical, forming another radical, and then forming a stable product. So we've got this CH3 radical. That's going to be extremely reactive, and that could react with some other things. So let's carry that CH3 forward and look at what happens to that. So here we have a CH3. And it's a radical, and you can see that with the, the dot that's on its own. That could react with, let's say, some Cl2 that's not been split up by the UV. So we've got that simple Cl2. Now, when this reacts, we get this product. So basically what's happening is one of the chlorines is breaking off and is now a radical. And one of the chlorines is being joined to the... CH3. And again, what you should see happening is that we had a radical react with a non-radical species to form a non-radical species, and then another radical comes back. We just got rid of that Cl, that Cl radical got rid of last time, and now it's come back again. So this Cl is going to start reacting with some other stuff. So it's propagating the reaction. Yes, we're getting rid of one radical species, but then making another one. That's what's propagating the reaction. And we can write this again succinctly with the CH3 radical plus the chlorine gas. There's our desired product, the synthesis of a haloalkane, which was the intent. But we're also getting this radical that's going to start reacting with some other stuff and just keep things going. So let's look at um, what happens next, which is termination. Termination is really all about putting a stop to it, taking those radical species and essentially soaking them up and forming stable products that are taking away those radicals and ending the reaction. And there's various ways in which this can happen. So for example, we've seen the initiation reaction where the chlorine is broken up to produce two radicals. The most simple and obvious termination step is to just take this equation and write it backwards. So we have two radicals reacting together, forming Cl2 again. The Cl2 is, of course, a stable product. So you're ending up with basically reversing the initiation step for a termination reaction. So that is the simplest one. We have some other ones um, that we can look at in a second. We can also represent that more simply with uh, that equation there. So let's look at the other possible reactions. So we could have two of the CH3 radicals finding each other. And then they could just join together something like this, form a covalent bond, and there you're going to get a stable product. And so that's going to look like this. You've got a CH3 and a CH3, both of which are radical, simply forming um, C2H6. And that is going to solve some of the problem. And it soaks up two of the radicals and is, of course, a termination step for that reason. What you could also see happening is a CH3 radical and a chlorine radical. And when they form together, you're simply going to get your um, desired product, your haloalkane that you wanted to make in the first place. And so this reaction could simply be represented as so, just showing the radicals and the product. These are the main termination steps that you're going to get. So let's start and summarize all of the reactions so far and get an overall picture of the key reactions that are happening and then look at a few of the side reactions that could also happen. So obviously we're going to start with the initiation step and the initiation step is all about making those radicals to get things going. So you've got the chlorine splitting up into two chlorine radicals. Then the propagation step, we have the chlorine radical actually reacting. So we have our CH4 finding a chlorine radical, forming another radical and a stable product. The radical that's formed 
then of course propagates the reaction. So we see this one's reacting with some Cl2, forming the desired product, but then also giving rise to a radical. And that radical could perhaps find the CH4 or it could do some alternative reactions. And the side reactions are things that we're gonna look at in the next slide. So we can also have a general way of expressing the propagation step. So in the propagation step, we have a radical and non-radical reacting to the earth to form another radical and another non-radical. So it's like, it's kind of swapping around. You're always having one radical used up, but forming another one again. So you're propagating the reaction for that reason. Then in termination, we have various ways of soaking up those radicals and forming stable products that are not radicals that are gonna keep propagating the reaction. So the general rule for termination is where you have a radical and a radical reacting together to form a non-radical and that's putting a stop to the reaction. So this slide forms a nice summary of the principal reactions that are going on in the synthesis of this haloalkane. This isn't the only thing that's going on. I'm gonna show you an example of a little side reaction that could also be happening. And one of the reasons why this isn't the best way to synthesize haloalkanes. So we've got some other reactions that could occur, such as this one, where our chlorine radical forms a new product with our um, desired product. And so you're ending up with the CH3 dropping down to CH2, and one of the hydrogens is being replaced by a chlorine radical. And you're also getting some more HCl. Then what could happen is that this radical could react with a Cl2 and you could end up with CH2Cl2 and you're now getting a different product. And this process could continue over and over again. And the fundamental problem is, you know, this wasn't what you wanted to make in the first place. So you've got other products being formed, which wasn't the original intention, which is one of the reasons why this isn't the best way of synthesizing haloalkanes. So I hope this video was helpful to you and you now understand the fundamentals up to A level of how free radical substitution reactions work. If it was useful, please like and subscribe below. And finally, thank you very much for watching.